The Psychology of Motivation How to Stay Motivated While Learning English Introduction The Roller Coaster of Motivation Learning English is an emotional journey, one that often feels like a roller coaster with exhilarating highs and frustrating lows. At the start of your journey, everything seems new and exciting. You may have felt energized by the thought of conversing with native speakers, traveling to new places, or simply impressing others with your language skills. You might have imagined yourself effortlessly ordering food in English or understanding song lyrics without needing subtitles. In those first few days or weeks, you likely made quick progress, learning basic phrases, picking up greetings, and feeling motivated to continue. However, as time goes on, the learning process often becomes more challenging. The thrill of mastering basic phrases may fade, and the effort required to move to the next stage can feel overwhelming. At some point, you may find yourself thinking, why is this taking so long? I've been studying for months, and I'm still not fluent. You may also encounter feelings of self-doubt. When grammar rules feel confusing or when you struggle to find the right word in a conversation, you might wonder if you're good enough to learn the language. These moments of frustration are natural. Almost every learner faces them at one point or another. But the key to long-term success is learning how to manage these emotional ups and downs. Motivation, it turns out, isn't something you find once and hold on to forever. It's a fluid force, one that needs to be nurtured, reignited, and managed over time. Some days, you'll wake up excited to study. Other days, you'll feel like giving up altogether. The important thing is not to get discouraged during the low points. Instead, you need to develop tools and strategies to stay on track even when motivation feels scarce. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to stay motivated while others lose steam? It's not that successful learners never experience frustration. They do. The difference is that they've developed strategies to keep going, even when the going gets tough. They understand that motivation is not just about sheer willpower. It's about creating the right mindset, building sustainable habits, and knowing how to reconnect with your purpose when you feel lost. Staying motivated while learning English isn't just about achieving fluency or passing an exam. It's about learning to enjoy the process itself. Every word learned, every conversation practiced, and every mistake made is part of your growth. And the good news? Motivation can be cultivated no matter where you are in your learning journey. In this article, we'll explore the psychological principles behind motivation and offer practical advice for staying motivated over the long term. Whether you're just starting or you've been learning English for years, you'll find insights to help you persevere and thrive. Intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. What drives you? Motivation is a powerful force, but it's not always straightforward. To understand how to stay motivated while learning English, we need to explore two different types of motivation, intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Both play essential roles in your journey, but the way they influence your progress can differ. Intrinsic motivation comes from within you learn for the pure joy and satisfaction of learning. It's the feeling you get when you discover a new word and can't wait to use it in a sentence, or when you finish reading a book in English and feel a sense of personal accomplishment. Intrinsic motivation is what makes you enjoy the process of learning itself. Think about a time when you were so immersed in something like a movie in English or a conversation with a native speaker that you lost track of time. That's intrinsic motivation at work. It pulls you toward your goal because you genuinely enjoy the challenge. 
In contrast, extrinsic motivation comes from external rewards. It's when you study because you need to pass an exam, earn a certificate, or meet a job requirement. It's also the satisfaction you get when someone praises your English or when you can show off your new skills to friends and family. External motivation can be powerful, especially in the short term. However, if it becomes your only reason for learning, it can create pressure and stress. Have you ever felt exhausted after studying too hard for a test and thought, why am I even doing this? That's often a sign that extrinsic motivation has taken over, and it can leave you feeling drained if not balanced with some personal enjoyment. Both types of motivation are essential, and learning to balance them is key. Research shows that intrinsic motivation tends to create more lasting commitment. When you enjoy the process, you're more likely to keep going even when things get tough. However, intrinsic motivation isn't always present, and there will be times when you need external goals to keep you moving forward. This is where extrinsic motivation can act as a valuable support system. When you feel tired or unmotivated, external rewards can remind you why you started in the first place. Think about this. Why did you start learning English? Was it because you needed it for work? Or was it because you loved the idea of exploring a new language? Maybe it was a bit of both. Reflecting on your reasons can help you reconnect with your purpose, especially on days when motivation feels low. Ask yourself, what do I enjoy about learning English? What personal rewards have I experienced along the way? These reflections can reignite your intrinsic motivation. One way to strengthen both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation is to set small, achievable goals that bring a sense of accomplishment. For example, if you enjoy watching TV shows, challenge yourself to watch an episode without subtitles. When you succeed, you'll feel both the internal satisfaction of understanding the dialogue and the external reward of knowing you completed a task. It's a win-win situation. Now, let's consider how extrinsic motivation plays a role in real life. Imagine you need to learn English for a promotion at work. Your primary goal may be external, but you can still find ways to make the process enjoyable. You could focus on learning vocabulary related to your field or practice conversations with colleagues. Finding pleasure in the small steps toward your larger goal keeps your motivation alive and prevents burnout. It's also helpful to reward yourself along the way. Rewards don't have to be extravagant. Small treats work just as well. If you complete a challenging lesson, give yourself time to relax with an English movie or indulge in a favorite snack. Have you ever told yourself, I'll finish this lesson and then I can enjoy a break? This simple strategy can make studying feel less like a burden and more like a balanced part of your day. Remember, the key is to recognize your progress and appreciate both the big and small wins. Many learners focus so much on their ultimate goal, whether that's fluency or passing a test, that they forget to enjoy the journey. But learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Every new word, every conversation, and every mistake brings you closer to your goal. Instead of waiting to feel proud only when you achieve fluency, celebrate your growth at every stage. Ask yourself, what new thing did I learn today? What small success can I acknowledge right now? The Plateau Effect why progress sometimes feels slow. The plateau effect is a common phenomenon in language learning. At the beginning of your journey, everything feels exciting because you see rapid improvement. Learning how to introduce yourself or ask for directions in English feels like a huge victory. But as you advance, 
progress becomes harder to notice. Suddenly, you're no longer learning dozens of new words every day. Instead, you're trying to understand idioms, improve your pronunciation, or master irregular verbs. And these things take time. Have you ever felt like you've hit a wall? Like no matter how much you study, you're not improving anymore? That's the plateau. It's the stage where progress feels so slow that it's easy to believe you're stuck. But the truth is you're not stuck. You're just at a more complex stage of learning. In the early stages, progress is fast because you're learning the basics. As you move to higher levels, the skills you're working on become more subtle and advanced. This plateau can be frustrating, especially if you expect continuous progress. You might think, why am I still struggling with grammar rules? Shouldn't I be fluent by now? It's normal to feel this way, but it's important to understand that progress at advanced stages is more about refinement than leaps forward. Even if you don't notice it, Every day you practice, you're building deeper understanding and fluency. One strategy to overcome the plateau is to change your approach. If you've been focusing on grammar exercises for months, switch things up. Try listening to English podcasts or reading short stories. Change adds novelty, and novelty is exciting. It can reignite your motivation and keep you engaged. Ask yourself, what new method can I try this week? Can I join a conversation group or try writing a short story in English? These new activities not only break the monotony, but also introduce you to new ways of thinking and learning. It's also helpful to adjust your expectations. Many learners quit when they feel they're not making progress, but often they're improving in ways they can't yet measure. Think about this. Can you understand conversations better than you could a few months ago? Are you making fewer mistakes in your writing? These subtle improvements are signs of growth, even if they don't feel dramatic. To push through the plateau, focus on small, measurable goals. Instead of saying, I want to be fluent, break your goal into smaller steps. For example, I will learn five new idioms this week, or I will speak with a native speaker once this month. When you achieve these goals, you'll feel motivated to continue, even if the bigger goal of fluency feels far away. The plateau is also a great time to reflect on how far you've come. Take a moment to think about where you started. Remember the first time you struggled to introduce yourself in English? Now, you can probably do that with ease. Reflecting on your progress can remind you that even if things feel slow, you are still moving forward. Ask yourself, what can I do today to take one small step forward? Can I learn a new word, practice for 10 minutes, or read a short article? Small steps may not feel significant in the moment, but over time, they add up to meaningful progress. The plateau is not the end of your journey. It's just a different stage. And with the right mindset, you can push through it and reach new levels of fluency. Building the right environment for learning creating a motivational space. Environment plays a crucial role in shaping your motivation. Think about it. Where do you usually study English? Is it a quiet, well-organized space? Or is it a cluttered table with distractions all around? Your surroundings can either help you focus or pull you away from your goals. Motivation doesn't just depend on your willpower. It also depends on the environment you create for yourself. Have you ever found that a small change in your surroundings, like moving to a quiet room or lighting a candle, makes it easier to concentrate? That's because your brain responds to environmental cues, either nudging you toward productivity or leading you to procrastinate. One way to enhance motivation is by setting up a dedicated learning space. 
This doesn't mean you need an elaborate study room. A small, organized corner with your study materials can do wonders. When you sit in that space, your brain begins to associate it with learning, making it easier to focus. Have you noticed that certain places, like a cozy cafe or a library, make you feel more motivated to study? It's not just in your head. Studies show that creating physical routines, such as sitting in the same place to study, can help develop mental discipline and reduce procrastination. However, it's not just the physical environment that matters. The emotional environment is just as important. Learning a language can sometimes feel lonely. If you're always studying alone, it's easy to lose momentum. That's why connecting with other learners can boost your motivation. Have you joined any conversation groups or online forums for English learners? Interacting with others who share your goals can reignite your passion for learning. Imagine practicing with someone who understands your struggles. Doesn't that sound motivating? Finding study partners, mentors, or teachers can make the process more enjoyable and less isolating. Have you ever noticed how your mood influences your study sessions? When you're feeling positive, you're more likely to push yourself to learn. But on days when you're overwhelmed or stressed, it can be hard to stay motivated. This is where emotional regulation comes into play. To stay on track, try to recognize your emotional state before each study session. If you're feeling down, take a few minutes to do something uplifting, listen to your favorite song, take a short walk, or talk to a friend. Even small actions can shift your emotional state and prepare your mind for learning. Another effective strategy is to surround yourself with English as much as possible. Imagine if your phone, computer, and everyday tools were all in English. How much exposure would that give you? Switching your phone's language to English, listening to podcasts during your commute, or reading English news in the morning can immerse you in the language without feeling like hard work. Have you tried using English in everyday activities, such as thinking through your grocery list or journaling in English? These small efforts can turn passive exposure into active learning, keeping you connected to the language even when you're not sitting down to study formally. Celebrate progress in your space. One motivational trick is to display reminders of your achievements. This could be a notebook filled with new words you've learned, certificates from completed courses, or even sticky notes with encouraging quotes. Seeing these reminders every day reinforces the message that you're making progress, even when it doesn't feel obvious. Think about it. What small wins have you achieved recently? And how could you remind yourself of them visually? Perhaps you could create a language journal where you jot down everything new you learn. Looking back on it will give you a sense of accomplishment when motivation feels low. Finally, let's talk about the role of distractions. It's natural to feel tempted by social media, video games, or other activities when you sit down to study. But there are ways to manage these distractions without being hard on yourself. Instead of banning distractions altogether, try scheduling breaks. Have you ever told yourself, just one more YouTube video, and then I'll study, only to end up wasting an hour? That's your brain trying to avoid the discomfort of studying. A more effective approach is to use the Pomodoro technique, where you study for 25 minutes and then take a five-minute break. This gives your brain the relief it needs while still keeping you on track. Doesn't it feel easier to focus when you know a break is coming? The role of habits, small actions that build big results. Motivation often fluctuates, but habits create stability. Have you ever wondered how some people stick to their goals even when they don't feel motivated? The secret lies in habits, small, consistent actions that become automatic over time. When you rely on habits, 
You no longer need to convince yourself to study each day. Instead, studying becomes part of your routine, like brushing your teeth or drinking water. Building a habit takes time and patience. Research suggests that it can take anywhere from 21 to 66 days to form a new habit, depending on the complexity of the task. So if you want studying English to become a habit, you need to start small and stay consistent. Have you tried setting a specific time each day for your English practice? For example, if you always study at 7 p.m., your brain will start to expect it, making it easier to get started. Even if you study for just 10 minutes a day, the consistency matters more than the duration. One way to build habits is through habit stacking, a technique where you link a new habit to an existing one. For example, if you already drink coffee every morning, you could pair that with 10 minutes of English reading. Since your brain is already used to drinking coffee, adding a new habit to it becomes easier. Think about your current routines. What daily activity could you link your English practice to? It's also essential to keep your habits flexible. Some learners get discouraged if they miss a day or two, thinking they've ruined their progress. But the truth is, missing a day is not a failure. Life happens and it's normal to have off days. What matters is that you get back on track as soon as possible. Have you ever thought, I missed two days? What's the point in continuing? This mindset can derail your progress. Instead, remind yourself that one missed day doesn't erase all the effort you've put in so far. It's okay to stumble. What's important is that you keep moving forward. Incorporating rewards into your habit-building process can make it more enjoyable. For example, after completing a study session, you could reward yourself with something small, like watching your favorite show or eating a treat. Rewards give your brain a reason to associate the habit with positive emotions, which makes it more likely to stick. Ask yourself, what rewards would motivate me to study today? Could it be something as simple as listening to music or spending time with friends? Over time, your habits will start to run on autopilot, making motivation less of an issue. You'll no longer need to force yourself to study because it will feel natural to do so. This shift can be incredibly empowering. Imagine a future where practicing English is just another part of your daily routine. How would that change your learning experience? Dealing with setbacks and frustration. Turning challenges into growth opportunities. No matter how motivated or disciplined you are, setbacks are an inevitable part of any learning journey. Whether it's forgetting words you thought you had mastered, struggling to keep up with native speakers, or missing a few study sessions due to personal commitments, setbacks can feel like heavy roadblocks. It's natural to feel frustrated when things don't go as planned, but how you respond to these moments determines whether they become a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Have you ever thought, what if I'm just not good at learning languages? If so, you're not alone. Many learners have similar thoughts, but setbacks are not signs of failure. They're part of the process. One of the most important lessons in learning English, or any skill, is that mistakes and struggles are necessary for growth. It's impossible to improve without getting things wrong along the way. Think of young children learning to speak. They mispronounce words, make grammatical errors, and often struggle to communicate, but they keep trying because they aren't afraid of making mistakes. As adults, we tend to develop a fear of failure, thinking we need to be perfect from the start. But language learning isn't about perfection, it's about progress. Ask yourself, how can I learn from this mistake? Instead of seeing setbacks as failures, try to view them as opportunities to improve. Each mistake you make is a step toward mastery. Sometimes, 
Setbacks come in the form of plateaus where it feels like you're not making any progress. During these times, you might think, I've been learning for months, but I still struggle with conversations. What's the point? This mindset is understandable, but dangerous. It's in these moments of doubt that many learners give up. However, these plateaus are not evidence that you aren't improving. They're a normal part of the learning process. As your skills develop, the improvements become subtler. For example, mastering the nuances of pronunciation or understanding idioms takes longer than learning basic vocabulary. You might not notice immediate results, but that doesn't mean you aren't making progress. One way to stay motivated during setbacks is to reframe your challenges. Instead of saying, I'll never be good at English, try thinking, this is hard, but every time I practice, I'm getting a little better. Reframing challenges in a positive way helps you stay motivated. When you find yourself feeling discouraged, pause and ask yourself, what small win can I acknowledge today? Even if you didn't meet your study goals, perhaps you recognized a new word in a conversation or understood part of a TV show without subtitles. These small victories matter and should be celebrated. Setbacks are also an opportunity to evaluate your learning methods. If you feel stuck, it might be a sign that your current approach needs to be adjusted. Have you been focusing too much on grammar exercises but neglecting listening practice? Or are you overwhelmed by the sheer volume of vocabulary you're trying to memorize? Sometimes, simply changing your routine, like joining a conversation group or switching to a new study app, can reignite your passion and help you move past obstacles. Ask yourself, what can I do differently this week to make learning more enjoyable? Another strategy for dealing with setbacks is to practice self-compassion. Many learners are hard on themselves, thinking they need to push through frustration without ever slowing down. But learning a language is a long-term commitment and burnout is real. If you're feeling exhausted or frustrated, it's okay to take a break. A day or two off can give your brain time to recharge, making it easier to return to your studies with fresh energy. Have you ever felt guilty about taking a break? It's important to remember that rest is not the enemy of progress. It's part of the process. Treat yourself with the same kindness you would offer a friend. Would you tell a friend to give up because they had a bad day? Of course not. So why say that to yourself? Finding joy in the process. Falling in love with learning. One of the best ways to stay motivated is to fall in love with the process of learning English, rather than focusing solely on the end goal. When you're too fixated on fluency or passing exams, learning can feel like a chore. But when you learn to enjoy the small moments along the way, like understanding a joke in English or chatting with a stranger, you'll find that motivation comes more naturally. Ask yourself, what do I enjoy most about learning English? Is it discovering new words, listening to music, or watching movies? Leaning into these enjoyable activities will keep you engaged even on tough days. Language is more than just grammar and vocabulary. It's a way of connecting with others and understanding different cultures. Have you ever felt a sense of excitement when you learned a phrase that's unique to English, like it's raining cats and dogs? Or when you realize that certain idioms reflect cultural values that are different from your own? These moments remind you that learning English is not just about memorizing rules. It's about exploring a new world. To keep the joy alive, try immersing yourself in the culture of the language. Read English novels, watch movies from English-speaking countries, or listen to music with English lyrics. Have you ever laughed out loud at a joke in a TV show 
or felt moved by a song's lyrics. Those emotional experiences make learning meaningful and memorable. When you enjoy what you're learning, the time flies, and studying no longer feels like a burden. Another way to find joy is to turn learning into a game. Challenge yourself to use new words in conversations or see how long you can go without switching back to your native language. Gamifying your learning makes it more fun and keeps you motivated. Imagine this. What if you treated every conversation in English as an adventure, where each word you understand or sentence you construct is a small victory? Wouldn't that make the process more exciting? It's also important to celebrate progress, no matter how small. Too often, learners focus only on what they haven't achieved yet, like perfect pronunciation or advanced fluency and overlook the progress they've already made. But every step forward, no matter how small, is worth celebrating. Did you understand a new idiom today? Did you have a conversation with a native speaker, even if it was short? These are all signs of growth. Take a moment to reflect on how far you've come and remind yourself, I'm getting better every day. Falling in love with learning also means being kind to yourself when things don't go perfectly. Have you ever hesitated to speak in English because you were afraid of making a mistake? Fear of failure can hold you back, but making mistakes is an essential part of learning. The more you allow yourself to make mistakes, the faster you'll improve. Try thinking of each mistake as a clue. Each one shows you what to work on next. When you embrace mistakes, you'll feel more comfortable taking risks, which is crucial for becoming fluent. The journey to fluency is long, and there will be ups and downs along the way. But when you learn to enjoy the process itself, you'll find that motivation becomes less of a struggle. You'll wake up excited to practice, not because you have to, but because you want to. And the best part? As you grow in your ability to communicate in English, you'll open doors to new experiences, friendships, and opportunities. Isn't that worth the effort? The power of consistency. Small steps that lead to big changes. Learning English is not a sprint. It's a marathon. While bursts of motivation can give you a strong start, it's consistency that will carry you to the finish line. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to feel motivated for the first few days of a new routine, only to lose that excitement later on? That's because motivation is like a spark. It flares up but burns out quickly. What keeps the fire alive is consistency, even on days when you don't feel like studying. Consistency doesn't mean you have to study for hours every day. In fact, research shows that short, regular study sessions are more effective than long, infrequent ones. Imagine watering a plant. If you drench it with water once a month, it won't grow well. But if you give it a little water every day, it flourishes. Your brain works the same way when learning a language. It's better to study for 20 minutes daily than for three hours once a week. Do you sometimes struggle to make time for learning? Start small. 10 minutes is enough to build a habit. Over time, those small efforts will accumulate into noticeable progress. It's important to maintain consistency even when life gets busy. There will be days when you feel overwhelmed with work, family, or other commitments, and studying English might seem impossible. But consistency doesn't mean perfection. It means showing up in some way, even if it's not your best effort. On busy days, could you listen to a podcast on your commute or review vocabulary for five minutes before bed? These small actions keep you connected to your learning, ensuring that you don't lose momentum. Remember. Doing something is always better than doing nothing. When you stick to a routine, 
you begin to experience the compound effect, small improvements that build over time. At first, you may not notice much progress, and it might feel frustrating. Have you ever thought, I've been practicing for weeks, but I still struggle to speak fluently? This is a common experience. But learning, like any skill, follows an exponential curve. You might not see progress immediately, but with time, all those small efforts add up. Suddenly, you'll find yourself understanding conversations more easily or speaking with greater confidence. And when that moment comes, you'll realize that every small step was worth it. Setting realistic goals. The key to staying motivated over time. One of the biggest reasons learners lose motivation is because they set goals that are too ambitious or vague. Have you ever told yourself, I want to be fluent in English by the end of the year? While it's great to aim high, broad goals like this can feel overwhelming and discouraging. When you don't see immediate progress, it's easy to think you're failing. Instead, breaking your goals into smaller, achievable steps can keep you motivated. Ask yourself, what is one small thing I can accomplish today? It could be learning five new words, completing one chapter of a graded reader, or having a five-minute conversation in English. Achievable goals give you a sense of progress, which builds confidence and keeps you going. For example, instead of saying, I want to master English grammar, you could focus on smaller tasks like mastering the present perfect tense. These small, focused goals are easier to achieve, and each success gives you a motivational boost. Have you tried celebrating these smaller victories? Each time you reach a goal, no matter how minor it seems, take a moment to recognize your effort. These moments of acknowledgement are essential for building long-term motivation. It's also important to be flexible with your goals. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes your priorities will shift. If you find that a goal no longer feels relevant or realistic, it's okay to adjust it. For example, if you originally planned to practice speaking every day, but find that three days a week is more manageable, adjust your plan. This isn't failure. It's smart goal setting. Being flexible ensures that your goals remain motivating rather than overwhelming. Ask yourself, what's working well in my current routine and what could I change to make learning more enjoyable? The emotional side of learning. How to stay positive through the ups and downs. Learning English isn't just an intellectual challenge. It's an emotional journey, too. There will be moments when you feel excited and proud of your progress. But there will also be times when frustration, self-doubt, and anxiety creep in. It's normal to feel a range of emotions when learning something new. Have you ever felt nervous speaking English in front of others? Or discouraged when you couldn't remember a word you knew the day before? These emotions are part of the process, and learning to manage them is key to staying motivated. One of the most common emotions language learners experience is fear of making mistakes. Have you ever held back from speaking because you were afraid of being judged? This fear is natural, but it can be a major barrier to progress. The truth is mistakes are not only inevitable, they're essential. Every time you make a mistake, you're learning what not to do, which brings you closer to doing it right. Try to reframe mistakes as opportunities. The next time you catch yourself thinking, I'm afraid of saying this wrong. Remind yourself, this mistake will help me improve. Another emotional challenge is feeling overwhelmed by how much there is to learn. English is a complex language with thousands of words, idioms, and rules. At times, it can feel like you'll never master it all. Have you ever thought, how will I ever remember all of this? 
The key is to focus on progress, not perfection. You don't need to know every word or grammar rule to communicate effectively. Learning a language is not about mastering everything. It's about learning enough to connect with others. Each conversation you have, no matter how imperfect, is a step forward. Self-doubt is another emotion that can hold you back. There might be days when you question your ability to learn English and wonder if you'll ever become fluent. Have you ever compared yourself to other learners and felt discouraged? It's easy to fall into the trap of comparing your progress to others, but everyone's learning journey is unique. Instead of comparing yourself to others, focus on your personal growth. Think back to where you started. How much have you improved since then? What challenges have you overcome? These reflections can help you stay grounded and remind you that progress is happening. Even if it's using slow. storytelling as a motivational tool, learning through stories. Storytelling is one of the most powerful ways to stay motivated while learning English. Stories engage your emotions, making learning more enjoyable and memorable. Have you ever felt completely immersed in a book, movie, or TV show? That's the magic of storytelling. It captures your attention and keeps you invested. When you engage with English through stories, you're not just practicing vocabulary and grammar. You're connecting with the language on a deeper level. Reading or listening to graded readers, books written specifically for language learners, can be especially motivating. These stories are designed to match your skill level, giving you a sense of accomplishment as you progress through them. Have you tried reading a graded reader recently? How did it feel when you reached the end of the story? Finishing a book, even a short one, can boost your confidence and show you that learning English is within your reach. Stories also expose you to natural language and context. When you read a novel or watch a movie, you encounter words and phrases in real-life situations, making them easier to remember. Have you ever learned a new phrase from a movie and found yourself using it in conversation later? That's the power of context. It makes language stick. Engaging with stories allows you to absorb grammar and vocabulary naturally, without the pressure of formal study. Finally, stories offer an emotional connection that makes learning meaningful. Have you ever felt inspired by a character in a book or moved by the message of a film? These emotional experiences create lasting memories, which can keep you motivated. When learning feels personal and meaningful, it becomes more than just a task. It becomes an enjoyable part of your life. Building confidence, speaking without fear, and embracing conversations. Confidence is one of the most valuable skills when learning a language, yet many learners find it the hardest to develop. Have you ever felt hesitant to start a conversation in English, afraid that you might make a mistake or struggle to find the right words? It's common to fear judgment or embarrassment when speaking a new language. But the truth is, confidence isn't something you wait to gain. It's something you build through practice. The more you speak, the more comfortable you become. And with time, fear transforms into excitement. One of the most effective ways to build confidence is by starting small. If the idea of having a long conversation feels intimidating, begin with shorter interactions. Could you greet the barista in English when ordering coffee or exchange a few words with a fellow learner? These tiny moments add up. Each time you speak, you're proving to yourself that you can do it, even if it's not perfect. Think of confidence as a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. Have you ever experienced the joy of finishing a conversation and realizing it went better than you expected? That moment of success is proof that your efforts are paying off. It's also important to practice speaking without worrying about perfection. 
Have you ever caught yourself pausing in the middle of a sentence, trying to remember the exact right word? While it's natural to want to speak correctly, fluency is not about perfection. It's about communication. Native speakers make mistakes too. They forget words, rephrase sentences, and sometimes struggle to express their thoughts clearly. What matters most is that you keep going. When you focus on communication rather than correctness, speaking becomes less stressful and more enjoyable. Ask yourself, did I make myself understood? If the answer is yes, you've succeeded. One strategy for developing confidence is to immerse yourself in real-life conversations as much as possible. Language learning apps and textbooks are helpful, but nothing compares to the experience of speaking with another person. If you don't have access to native speakers, try joining online communities where English learners gather to practice. Have you ever considered joining a language exchange? These exchanges allow you to practice English with someone learning your native language, creating a supportive and non-judgmental environment. In these conversations, both parties are learners, which takes the pressure off and makes it easier to relax. Another way to build confidence is through shadowing exercises. Shadowing involves listening to a native speaker and repeating what they say as closely as possible. This technique helps you improve pronunciation, rhythm, and intonation, making you sound more natural. Have you ever tried repeating after an English podcast or movie dialogue? It might feel awkward at first, but it's a powerful way to build speaking skills. As you practice shadowing, you'll notice that your words start to flow more easily, and over time, you'll feel more comfortable speaking in real conversations. Positive self-talk is also a powerful tool for building confidence. Our thoughts shape our behavior. And if you constantly tell yourself, I'm terrible at speaking English, you're reinforcing fear and doubt. But what if you change that narrative? Try saying, I'm improving every day, and mistakes are part of the process. At first, it might feel strange, but over time, positive affirmations can reshape your mindset. Whenever you catch yourself thinking negatively about your abilities, pause and ask, is this thought helping me or holding me back? You have the power to change the way you talk to yourself. Confidence doesn't mean never feeling nervous. It means learning to act despite those nerves. Even fluent speakers experience moments of insecurity, but they've learned to push through. What if you treated every conversation as a chance to grow rather than a test to pass? Wouldn't that make speaking English more enjoyable? The more you embrace conversations as opportunities rather than challenges, the faster your confidence will grow. Creating a supportive learning environment. Surrounding yourself with encouragement. Learning a language is much easier when you have a supportive environment. Have you ever felt frustrated because the people around you didn't understand the effort it takes to learn English? Maybe you've experienced moments where others criticized your mistakes or doubted your abilities. It's hard to stay motivated when you feel unsupported, but the good news is that you can create your own supportive environment. Surrounding yourself with encouragement, whether from people or resources, can make a huge difference in your learning journey. One way to build a positive environment is to connect with other learners. When you join a community of people who share your goals, you'll find that you're not alone in your struggles. Have you ever spoken with another learner and realized they face the same challenges as you? These shared experiences can be incredibly reassuring. In a supportive community, People celebrate each other's successes and offer encouragement during setbacks. Whether it's an online group or an in-person class, finding your tribe can provide the motivation you need to keep going. 
It's also important to surround yourself with positive resources. If you're constantly exposed to materials that feel too advanced or discouraging, it's easy to lose motivation. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by a book or podcast that was far beyond your level? While it's good to challenge yourself, it's equally important to engage with content that makes you feel capable. Find resources that match your current skill level. Whether it's graded readers, podcasts for beginners, or easy-to-understand TV shows. Each time you understand a new piece of content, your confidence will grow. Another way to create a supportive environment is to celebrate small wins along the way. Too often, learners focus only on the big goals like achieving fluency and forget to appreciate the small steps. But every new word learned, every conversation held, and every book finished is a victory worth celebrating. Have you ever taken a moment to acknowledge your progress, even if it felt small? These celebrations don't have to be elaborate. A simple, well done, or treating yourself to something you enjoy can make a big difference. When you celebrate your progress, you reinforce the idea that learning is enjoyable and worthwhile. If possible, Try to involve your family and friends in your learning journey. Explain to them why learning English matters to you and share your progress with them. Have you ever felt nervous about speaking English with friends or family? It can feel intimidating at first, but their encouragement can be invaluable. When the people around you understand your goals, they're more likely to offer support and motivation. And who knows? You might even inspire them to start learning something new, too. Creating a supportive environment also means being kind to yourself. Learning a language is a long process, and there will be days when you feel frustrated or discouraged. When these moments come, remind yourself, it's okay to have bad days. Everyone experiences setbacks, and they don't define your ability to succeed. Have you ever felt like giving up, only to find that things got easier after a short break? Sometimes, all you need is a little patience and self-compassion to keep going. The journey to fluency. Embracing the adventure. Fluency in English isn't a destination. It's an ongoing journey filled with challenges, discoveries, and personal growth. Along the way, You'll encounter moments of frustration, excitement, doubt, and pride. There will be times when you feel on top of the world, and other times when you wonder if you'll ever get there. But through it all, each step you take brings you closer to becoming the speaker you want to be. Have you ever looked back at where you started and realized how far you've come? That's the beauty of learning. It's a journey that changes you, both as a learner and as a person. The key to fluency lies in enjoying the process, rather than fixating on the outcome. What if you treated each conversation, each new word, and each book as a small adventure? When you approach learning with curiosity and excitement, it becomes less of a task and more of a joy. Fluency isn't just about knowing the rules of English. It's about using the language to connect with others, share your thoughts, and explore the world in new ways. Isn't that worth the effort? Through persistence, patience, and passion, you'll find that fluency is not as far away as it seems. Every mistake you make, every challenge you overcome, and every success you celebrate is bringing you closer to your goal. And when the day comes that you realize you've become fluent, not perfect, but confident and capable, you'll know that every step of the journey was worth it. So, are you ready to embrace the adventure? The world of English is waiting for you.